Welcome back. So today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about battery life on Linux. This is one of those things where if you've decided to run the Linux desktop on your daily driver, and especially if you're on a laptop, uh, battery life seems to be one of those things that consistently takes a hit compared to your laptop's native uh, natively installed operating system. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with what I'm talking about. If you buy a Windows laptop, it somehow seems to get more battery life on Windows than it does on Linux. And the same can be said sometimes even more so. If, you're, uh, if you have a MacBook that is running Linux, that battery life can be sometimes far worse than running Mac OS. So the, uh, the good thing is Linux is very customizable. And so I'll just be sharing with you some of my tips and experiences of how to get battery life better. I'm going to try and make these recommendations as distro agnostic as possible and also as hardware agnostic as possible. So while I don't have any hard and fast statistics to kind of back this up, here's what the results are for me anecdotally speaking. This is across uh, Ubuntu, Fedora, Elementary OS at the very least. Those have been the ones that I've recently used. Uh, so under these different operating systems in their default condition, on my Dell XPS 9570, uh, I typically get about three and a half to maybe four hours of battery life uh, on it. Now, this is the 1080p display. Uh, there's, uh, in terms of my usage, most of the time it's just web browsing and there's a fair bit of tabs and stuff going on. Uh, and I definitely don't try and do anything too heavy like video editing or anything crazy, but uh, that's that was a disappointing amount of battery life to me. Uh, compared to the five to six hours that I typically get on Windows. So uh, by the time I had employed a lot of the techniques that I'm gonna be showing you all today, uh, my battery life was back around that you know six hour mark. Um, so at the moment, um, especially just in the last week or so, I've been able to kind of sit down on the couch, get three hours or so of web browsing and stuff done and still have about half of my battery to go. Um, so I think the results hopefully will speak for themselves from your guys' perspective and experience as well. But uh, yeah, let's see what we can find out. Here is basically my four recommendations. Uh, recommendation number one, you want to make sure that uh, especially with a laptop that has a dedicated graphics card in it, especially from NVIDIA, make sure that you have those drivers installed and that you can switch uh, the power management. Now, let me just check really quick and make sure that my face isn't actually blocking the uh, yeah the little indicator here. But um, this little switcheroo thingy uh, is something that you can get on basically all of the Ubuntu-based distributions nowadays. Step one of that is just going to additional drivers on any Ubuntu-based desktop and whatever you're running, whether you're running Manjaro or Linux Mint or whatever, go to, uh, if you just hit the, the meta key or the Windows key on your keyboard and just start typing drivers, uh, you should come up with some sort of option to install those uh, drivers. Now, a lot of distributions do a great job nowadays of installing these out of the box and you don't have to, but just double check that you do have those installed. You'll know because if you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, you'll have that, the NVIDIA X server um, program living in your app list. So uh, once you hop into that, you can see down the bottom you have prime profiles and all you need to do is switch it to Intel if you're wanting to save some battery life. So that's probably the most straightforward one that is pretty basic no matter where you Google. The second one and, uh, and the, the following ones all uh, rely on different bits of software that help conserve battery life in different ways. Now, what I would say is be careful with the combination of these tools because over the years I've noticed that if you have too many of these tools running at the same time, they start to get on each other's nerves and you'll start noticing weird things happen like Bluetooth cutting out or Wi-Fi just randomly disconnecting, stuff like that. So first of all, I want to um, introduce you to or rather reintroduce some of you who may already uh, be well aware of this one, uh, which is PowerTop. PowerTop is a very simple tool that helps you see what exactly is sucking up energy, power from your battery and how fast your battery is discharging. Um, also, pro tip, the power statistics tool that Ubuntu has built into it uh, is kind of helpful for seeing uh, at like a graph of how quickly your laptop, dis uh, your laptop battery disappears and what the current charge health of your battery is. 
So in order to grab um, PowerTop, you just need to go sudo apt install PowerTop and that will uh, basically just give you a command line tool that will uh, give you the option to be able to see what is consuming power when on your system. So you do need to run it as root, so sudo PowerTop. And now, as you can see, I am plugged in at the moment, so I am not on battery. So it's saying power consumed, zip nada. Um, but across the top here, what you get is uh, different tabs that you can tab through by simply hitting tab on the keyboard. And it will tell you uh, some of the things that are using the most power. And also, it'll give you a really great indicator here on the turnables section. I'll see if we can zoom that out a bit can see that there is a bunch of switches essentially that are different power control mechanisms that you can switch between good and bad. Now, when you see bad, that literally means that this is uh, using a fair bit of power and you can toggle it on or off from these settings. Now, having to do this every single time is a bit of a pain in the butt, but usually, and my experience has been that um, the, the more recent Linux distribution that you're using, the better and more intuitive Linux is out of the box with knowing which of these to disable or which of these to scale down. If we go back to the overview, um, you can basically start chipping away at, uh, at what is eating up the battery. The other thing, so this is more of a diagnostic tool more than something that actually saves you battery life, but it gives you a really clear breakdown of what's chewing up what power. Very, very helpful stuff. So when you use that in combination with an app like TLP, TLP is once again a great way to save uh, power. And this is one of those things that you just kind of install it. And most of the time it, it, uh, it'll just work by default. Now, the good news is, is that uh, you can go and change pretty much anything and everything about what this little tool turns on or off. Um, by default, the settings that it recommends are fairly safe, um, but it does give you a bit of a warning here on its website um, about just be aware that some of these may do weird things to your system, but for the most part, they'll, um, it'll be fine. So uh, there is like a heap of great features that have gone into TLP over the years. And, uh, and as you can see, like most of these are operating at the kernel level, which uh, which is what you want because that is the that's the thing that is interacting with your hardware almost directly um, so everything from um, AMD GPU power management um, power saving on your Wi-Fi automatically enabling and disabling external drives all that kind of thing is all stuff that TLP can handle for you so once again in order to use this all you have to do is go back to your command line and uh, and install TLP. And if you want to also add power management to things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc., then you'll need to also include the TLP-RDW. Uh, so sudo apt install TLP and TLP-RDW, and that will then go out and uh, install those packages on your desktop. Now, funnily enough, I am personally not actually running TLP at the moment because the third one, which I would argue, um, oh, actually, before I get to the third one, which is probably my favorite and more recent find, I do want to point you in the direction of um, a really great um, graphical user interface for tweaking the TLP configuration because the TLP configuration is traditionally speaking, you got to go and open a configuration file and go down and change things, edit that config file. Whereas uh, the TLP-UI project is all about giving you checkboxes and things that you can tweak with a GUI to make that whole process a lot simpler, uh, which I really appreciate. So I'll drop a link to uh, the TLP-UI project GitHub down below, and uh, you can install this via Flatpak and other um, package managers have it natively in there as well. But finally, the last one that I wanna talk about is Auto-CPU-Freak. And uh, this is a really simple tool um, that I honestly, I don't fully understand why they don't ship this as standard in laptops anyway, um, when the distribution detects that you're on a laptop. This is a really brilliant project and it's given me some really real world results. It was very redundant. So basically, typically speaking, processors in modern Intel laptops nowadays are governed by 
uh, whether they need to be on performance or power saving mode. If it's on performance, they will let the, um, the, the CPU governor will let the CPU boost to its max clock speed for as long as it needs to, and then it will throttle it back to a, a, a lower frequency to conserve power. Now, when you're on performance mode, that will spike and dip as much as it needs to. But when you're on power saving mode, it will limit how high the CPU can go, uh, therefore conserving battery life. Now, all you need to do to be able to run this by the by is uh, there's a few different ways you can do it. My preferred way is to do it through the Snap Store because it's so darn easy. Uh, all you need to do is do the whole sudo snap install auto CPU freak. Now this assumes obviously that you've got snap packages uh, set up and enabled on your system. Um, but the other reason why the snap package works well is because it's automatically updated and because it runs in the background, you don't have to worry about it. Now, you can also jump in there and get yourself, G-I-T yourself, this project as well. Um, and it's already in the AUR for all the Arch folks out there. So um, the usage of this thing is also pretty straightforward. All it involves is you running the command from the command line, auto CPU freak. Now, when you do this, it'll give you the options that you can choose from when you're running this. So you can either run it in the monitor mode, which is where it's gonna make suggestions uh, for the CPU usage in that it'll just give you some feedback about whether it thinks you should use power saving mode or not. It's not actually gonna change anything. You can run it in live mode um, or you can run it in install mode. Now, literally the first thing I do when I install a new distro on my laptop is that I install auto CPU freak and hit the dash dash install. And this will add this little governor to basically on boot as soon as the, the computer powers up, it will run this in the background. Now I can jump into the log and see what it's been up to. And this will refresh every uh, couple of seconds and you can see the total CPU usage, how much of the CPU is being taxed, the temperature and the percentage used, the clock speed, all of that. So definitely recommend that you go and check out Auto CPU Freak for yourself. It's compatible with Intel processors, AMD and ARM, which is freaking awesome. So yeah, that'll be all from me for this week's video. Uh, let me know if you have any other great power saving tips in the comments below. And uh, yeah, long battery life for us all. See you in the next one.